Support for this podcast comes from the Phil Smith Center for Free Enterprise at the FAU College of Business. The Phil Smith Center for Free Enterprise supports the vision and strategic plan of the College of Business to advance thought leadership in business. The center supports chaired professorships and research, educational programs for faculty members and students, distinguished visiting faculty, along with a lecture series and other educational programs focused on the principles of free enterprise and how those principles affect growth and prosperity. Learn more at business.fau.edu forward slash Phil Smith. Hello, my name is Dan Gropper, and I am the Dean of the College of Business here at Florida Atlantic University. And in today's edition of the Dean's Podcast, we're introducing some of our new instructors. Our guest is William Patch Patchkowski, and Patch has been with us helping teach and be involved in our entrepreneurship programs for the last couple of years, and now we're pleased to welcome him as a full-time instructor. Patch has a PhD in management. Uh, He has a JD, a law degree, and an MBA. He brings to us experience serving as a captain in the U.S. Army Judge Advocate General Corps uh, for over a decade, and he's also worked as an attorney or consultant for a subsidiary of Goldman Sachs. So welcome, Patch. Uh, Thanks so much, Dean Gropper. I'm thrilled to be here and glad to have a conversation with you today. So, Patch, you've had a variety of experiences, both in the military and in the private sector. And we let me say first, we really appreciate your service uh, to the country and particularly in the JAG Corps. I've had some other prior students who served in the JAG Corps, and they always have a very interesting set of experiences, some of which they can talk about. But we're also interested in your work as an attorney and a consultant uh, in the private sector. Can you tell us a little bit about how those experiences in other areas help inform what you can teach our students in the business school and what you uh, what you help them learn how to do? Well, certainly, Dean Gropper, the main goal is to not only have the material that you're presenting to the students be able to be useful to them, but also make them understand or help them understand to the extent possible the way that it can and and be effective. And so I'm able to use some of the background that I've had both with my own experiences in the business world and working with those people that are in business uh, through that subsidiary called the ACO company, which is part of the Goldman Sachs group, uh, working with those people that they themselves were businessmen and women and how they shared their experiences and the things that they did. So I can talk about what I've done personally. I can talk about those that I've worked with that they themselves have been successful business people and successful entrepreneurs in particular. And then also wind that in with my academic experience so I can say, well, here's the theoretical and the the research-based reasons of why these are best practices. So it's not only the standard do what I've done or do what these people have done because things do change so quickly and so oftentimes immensely like we've seen most recently with a pandemic and uh, recognizing you can use some of these principles that others have done or perhaps I've done in my experience and then also be able to show how that fits into the research and how it fits into the uh, best principles that can be applied for the students to use. And I've, I've enjoyed using uh, the experiences that I do have in order to uh, be able to explain, you know, it becomes almost story time patch of, well, here's what I've seen or here's what's happened in the past and here's how it's turned out. So we can give real world examples that um, maybe the students haven't necessarily heard about. They may have uh, heard or, you know, oftentimes we'll hear about Apple and Google and uh, Southwest Airlines and uh, many others st- or Tesla, of course, and, you know, s- success stories. But in other respects, then they can hear things that are much more uh, personal and granular um, and hear it directly from either uh, some people that might come in as guest speakers or other people that, that I know directly that have been able to recount their successes. And so it makes it real, valuable and immediately implementable as well. 
I understand that you have worked with our entrepreneurial students and our students who are interested perhaps in starting their own firms uh, or in working in startups. Tell us a little bit about your expertise in, in helping advise uh, startup firms and in entrepreneurs and what kind of things that they need to know in particular that may be things that students who are going to work in a bigger, well-established organization, that perhaps it's, it's more important for the entrepreneurs than it is for the, uh, the other students. That is a, a key consideration, Dean Gropper, when you're looking at entrepreneur, entrepreneurship students is, at least in my perspective, is not do they want, what do entrepreneurs want to do, but how should entrepreneurs be thinking? And this notion of having an entrepreneurial mindset or thinking like an entrepreneur is something, frankly, all of us need to do uh, in any kind of organization. Things change. You know, they've changed at, in the academic settings, certainly, um, at you know, the, the way that um, the education is being delivered. Having to be flexible, having to come up with new and different and better ways is thinking like an entrepreneur. Anytime anyone says there's got to be a better way or something has changed, how are we going to address this to make it so people will still be served by the product or service that we're offering? That's thinking like an entrepreneur. So working with entrepreneurship students, that's a manifestation in a business sense of coming up with an idea, trying to determine whether or not that idea is something that will potentially be a business opportunity either now or potentially sometime into the future. That's the structure of it. But whether or not someone is going to be an entrepreneur or an intrapreneur within their organization, so they still have to say those key components. Am I doing something that's adding value? Is it better? Is it new or is it a better way? And am I taking action? So I talk with students that are maybe just starting on their entrepreneurial journey and say, well, even if you're in a restaurant, for example, if you've ever been saying, well, I've got the forks and knives on one side and the spoons and the napkins on the other side of this setup, and I'm trying to put these both together, why hasn't anyone put these both on the same side and I can put them all together that much easily? It takes me a lot less time. I'm not fiddling around and I can do to move on to other things that much more effectively. Well, that's thinking like an entrepreneur. You have came up with an idea. It was new. It was better. It wasn't life-changing. But you, then you also took action to make that happen. It is true that there is some risk. Anytime then you, their manager might say, wait a minute, what are you doing? I didn't come up with that idea, so it must be wrong. And then so there is that mindset still that says, well, yeah, if I am going to try to do something new and better, there could be some risk associated with it. In that case, probably not so much. But you're still thinking like an entrepreneur, even within a business, then that would be more entrepreneurial. Then if it turns out that the business says we're looking for someone that we need to promote, you've shown that you're looking to better the organization. Or if they're, you know, on the downside, if they're looking to lay people off, you're less likely to get laid off if you're someone that's constantly thinking of how can I add value. So that's the mindset that I try to bring in to the students to have them always thinking there's got to be a better way and what can I do about it? And then certainly working with entrepreneurial students, it's been, it's been fascinating and wonderful to see the students come up with these wonderful ideas and really have a level of excitement and desire to get right to it and, and have this passion. And it becomes infectious and it, it certainly um, comes to an opportunity where I continue to work with the students well beyond the classroom environment, well beyond the semester that I might have them uh, working with me and then potentially help connect them to uh, future endeavors. It's really uh, it's something that is going to continue to be a way that will help people continue to be uh, to excel both in their own businesses and their careers as they move forward. Patch, one of our points of pride in the College of Business is what we're able to do for our veterans who want to come back and get involved in in business. Tell us a little bit about your involvement in helping students who are veterans translate that uh, experience into the civilian sector. Uh, Certainly. It's been great these past two years to work with uh, Dr. Roland Kidwell and Dr. Kevin Cox with the Veterans Florida Entrepreneurship Program that Dr. Cox actually primarily has been the the lead person on. And I've I've been an instructor with them for 
the past two years, like I say, and it, that has been a really enjoyable experience because the veterans do come to the program with perhaps some already uh, established businesses that need some further work or some ideas that are more in the, the nascent stage in order to move forward. But with the veterans that I've worked with both at FAU and then prior to coming to FAU, it's been amazing to see the, the level of work ethic and the honor and integrity that they bring to everything. And so working with them has been a, a privilege. And even though it's been interesting, I, almost always I'm the only officer. It's been maybe one or out of the literally hundreds of veterans that I've had, the, like I say, the privilege to work with. I'm an officer that's talking with them. So I get teased a little bit and many of them have been combat veterans. Unfortunately, I haven't been in combat per se. And so it's I'm, I'm able to still speak their language, so to speak, but not have to, uh, but not feel like uh, I'm uh, uh, someone that needs to over explain what I'm doing. Instead, I can say, here's here's how we can work together and potentially be of service to you to move on to the next step. Because I also can appreciate that it's difficult to change from a military thought process, which is oftentimes quite structured and oftentimes uh, has the answer. You have a mission to complete. And that mission focus is something that is absolutely essential and, and sometimes lacking in a civilian capacity. But on the other hand, it's there's not as much translation sometimes from a technical standpoint. So if you know how to do be a mission completion as an infantry person, Unless you're actually doing that particular role, it's hard to translate that into something where you're not only should, but you're you're allowed to and encouraged to think more openly and, and free thinking. So changing a structured mindset to an entrepreneurial mindset, still while keeping that mission focused and loyalty and integrity is is something that is is a challenge. However, the, the veterans are without without question, highly motivated in order to make that transition that come to uh, come to college in general and certainly to the FAU programs. And so it has really been enjoyable to work within within that capacity. And I'm, I'm glad that I'll be able to continue to do so more on a going forward basis. I might add that for any veterans who may be listening to this, then the program continues to be open. The applications are not quite open yet, but it will be open soon. Go to the Adam Center page on the business.fau.edu page and go to the, the Veterans website. And you can apply for the Veterans Florida Entrepreneurship Program. And it's free. It uh, happens in the spring semester. And uh, once we take applications, which will be soon, then you'll be able to get more information to learn how to become part of that program and move forward from there. So I really encourage you, you or any veterans that you know, to apply for this program. It certainly is extraordinarily valuable. Well, that sounds great, Patch. As you move towards being a full-time instructor with us, what kind of areas are you particularly interested in teaching and how do you see yourself fitting into and supporting this entrepreneurship area of the college, which has been one of our areas where we've just broken into the national rankings and we want to keep growing and keep advancing? Well, thanks, Dean Gropper. And that's what I'm very excited about with how FAU has really committed to the entrepreneurship focus of their business school, along with many other components that they, they have already been successful with. And the type of entrepreneurship that I really enjoy looking into is the impact of the individual. So I have my background is and my PhD is more on the organizational behavior, industrial organizational psychology focus. My dissertation was on how the impact of using electronic communications and email influences people, including, including notions of privacy, which uh, that has been you know, thrust into the spotlight now that more and more we're required to communicate electronically. So the impacts of technology, the impact on how we communicate with each other, the impact of how we interact with each other. And then what can be done about that in order to become uh, more creative, more productive, more innovative. And then again, the entrepreneurial concept is not only innovation, but putting it into action. So 
putting all those concepts together on more of a granular scale on an individual scale, this notion of this mindset that people have, um, how do we look at it in um, scopes of uh, how we interrelate with each other in, in terms of concepts like justice and um, and fairness and goals that people have um, in terms of how do we treat each other. There's a lot of components that that will factor in there as we look at it. And from and that's more from a research standpoint. I'm really excited to be able to build on the research that I have been doing in the past and would like to continue doing with in the future. I'm looking forward to being able to collaborate with many, so many of the, the great researchers that have already been doing outstanding work. And there's you know, a lot to be done as the world continues to change, you know, so very rapidly and in, in a, uh, both a day-to-day existence like we're all feeling and then also certainly from a business standpoint. Um, as far as looking to uh, teach entrepreneurship, the more that we can provide opportunities for students to uh, put these, their ideas, put their business opportunities to the test, to get out there and be able to uh, have uh, have the chance to present. Um, there's already, um, in many cases, there's business plan competitions that both FAU puts on, um, and those are, are already integrated into my classes. That's That was the one of the first things that I wanted to make sure is students that are ready to present their business ideas are demonstrating competency. It's real. It's not just an esoteric abstract concept. It's something that's in the concrete. They may potentially even be able to get funding or further opportunities for mentorship. And that's the goal that I'll I'll want to continue to have people immediately start thinking about themselves as entrepreneurs and business people. Um, A point, in fact, is when when I have the students talk with me, I introduce myself and say, you know, I'm Dr. Patchkowski, but please call me Dr. Patch. And frankly, be ready to call me Patch because I want the students to think of of themselves immediately as entrepreneurs, not I'm a student that eventually will be an entrepreneur or I'm here just to learn and then I'll take my test and get an A hopefully and then go on to the next thing is how can I start thinking like an entrepreneur now? If you can have an entrepreneurial business when you're nine or 12 years old, or frankly, when you're 70 or 80 years old and start that up, you can start right now as a college student and have something that's going to progress forward. So the sooner that students start thinking of themselves as entrepreneurs, um, start looking at their ideas as being real and applicable maybe not instantaneously, but as something that should be worked on and continue to be applied, the more quickly then they can look at themselves and start thinking as entrepreneurs, as business people, um, ready to join the workforce into a firm where they can have this, as I mentioned before, this entrepreneurial mindset to say, I'm still someone who's going to be an innovator within a larger organization and make a difference, or for those students that want to start their own business, um, and that is you know, primarily the focus of the, the courses that, that we're teaching, is they're ready to do this and take charge of that opportunity to do so. Well, Patch, that sounds great. Thank you for joining us today and welcome to the College of Business. We look forward to your contributions. Thank you, Dean Gropper. I am very honored at the opportunity to be able to be part of FAU and all the things that you and the business school have been continuing to do to excel, uh, both academically and then also with the community of business people and entrepreneurs and veterans, for sure. I'm glad to be for sure. I'm glad to be so much. Thank you. To learn more about the FAU College of Business, please visit business.fau.edu. Dean Gropper Presents is part of the FAU College of Business Podcast Network. To learn more, visit us at business.fau.edu forward slash podcasts and follow Dean Gropper on Twitter at FAU Business Dean.